As a Leica 200 mil prime owner, I am now used to the finer things in life. I only eat caviar. I sleep on silk. I have been known to collect golden beetle carcasses. That's not, doesn't even sound exquisite. After shooting with this carved out of granite masterpiece, it is tough to go to any lesser a known system, but could the 200 to 50 work? Let me tell you why this is in a box right now. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Now I'll be honest with you, I took the Panasonic GH6 with the Leica 50 to 200 out. I got a bunch of nature shots. I came back, looked at the footage, immediately put it up for sale. It's not like it's a bad lens. Don't feel bad if you have it. It's just compared to the 200 mil prime, what I'm used to, I don't know, the edge has been taken off. The first thing I noticed was I just had less separation. That Tony 4, it's quite the difference as the cardinal husband came home to the wife. Wow. And she's like, hey buddy, hey husband, did you bring me something? He's like, what are you eating? Oh, we were saving those for Christmas. Oh, how could you? And so he left her. Or no, she left him, I think. Yeah, she left him. And then he was like, oh man, oh, goodbye sex. So that's the immediate thing I noticed. Tony 4 versus 2.8, it's noticeable. It's one stop, and that's a noticeable amount of stops in the Tonyature life. I just lent my friend the 25 mil Tony 1.4 and he has the 25mm 1.7. And I think he's doing a comparison video. Subscribe to Discovery Camera for that one. And when I tried those both, I could see the difference, but it was very slight. I imagined the 3D pop, but I did see a tonneature increase slightest amount. And that's like a third of a stop, but it's a full stop, that's noticeable. And that's a notice that I don't want to be a part of. It's still pretty sharp. It's a sharp lens. There's a squirrel eating a banana or the apple core. Oh, there it is. I see. I could see the details of the apple core as he left my life forever. He hopped down the post. I was like, not bad. If it was on the prime though, you would have seen a much sharper image, more 3D pop, the separation would increase and the ISO would lower. It's funny because you wouldn't think there'd be too much of a difference between these. Yes, it's a zoom versus a prime, but they're both 200 mil and it's just one stop, but that stop is enough. And then just being a prime, it's so contrasty and punchy and just beautiful and sharp. And I'm like, wow, always blown away. Like what I took away from this, when I saw the footage with the 50 to 200, I felt like I shot footage on a micro four thirds system. That's what I got home with. Whereas with this, I was like, I'm not missing anything from full frame. Like this is beautiful. You got Panasonic stabilization and colors and sharpness and detail and the frame rates. And then you have this prime that like somewhat matches the Sony zoom. But if your thing is filming bird suicide death jumps, you need 300 frames per second for that. And if you're lucky and you framed it perfectly to where she doesn't leap out of the frame up, oh, yeah, she did, didn't she? That's a bitch. That's on me. I got her again. Oh, wow. That's the thing about birds and framing. I, you're always guessing which way are they going to go? Okay, I'm going to frame it. And you're going to go, oh, you went that way, huh? I suck so bad at following a bird. Once it leaves, I just can't do it. I don't know if my brain is cross-wired. Something's wrong with me. Like I see people do it all the time. It's like there it flies and they're like slowly, I just panic and I'm like, <gasps> and I, I overshoot it or undershoot it. It's embarrassing. I got this salmon, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a fish expert, although I do aspire to be. I was trying to judge the focus. I was like moving it a lot. It's really hard to see. Oh wow, look at that thing. It was huge. I noticed the splashes and I was like, what is that? And I'm just expecting it to be a salmon because it's like salmon run time of year, but probably not. Here's a squirrel, not the most magical squirrel I've ever seen. There's just, I don't know, the lighting's bad. It's my fault, but the Leica Prime would have done some justice to this squirrel. 
Now this was a cool shot. I saw a little starling, I think. European starling, don't quote me on that. But I managed to get focus eventually. That's just the thing with Panasonic. It's just that viewfinder is not very sharp and it's really hard to tell if they're ever in focus. And you can't trust peeking because you'll see peeking on a bird, but he won't be in focus fully. It's really annoying. This bird like manages to go through all these various lighting scenarios there. We're looking pretty nice. It's not bad. It's not a terrible lens. If you have it, be proud. But like the 200 mil would have crushed this. Like a shot like this, it's not just that it doesn't have the separation. It also lacks the contrast, I think, and the lighting and the skill of the videographer. But it's just I wasn't blown away with any shots I was getting. That was until I witnessed a salmon mating ritual, the likes of which the slow motion capabilities could only understand. The male sneaking up on the female, huh? Just like the humans do. He's pushing up and he's like, hey, how you doing? Hey, 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 whoa, you like this? You feel that power, the wave? You feel that wave that I generated? That means I could swim up to, help you later on if you need it. I'm powerful. I'm salmon. Do you want to make love? I think you do. It was a pretty magical shot and then I did the 300 frames per second just to see if the magic could be ours and it was just so soft and I was like eh maybe not the cinema but I tell you you got to be on like a 2.8 prime and Topaz sharpen that one up and then you might have had something, but you didn't. One little side rant about the GH6. I've noticed two things that are super annoying. I wanna see if I can show them to you now. There's a big delay when turning this camera on till when it's actually ready to shoot and another huge delay after pressing record. I always miss everything. Watch this. I'll try to, here it is. That's faster than it's ever been. Did you firmware update in the night? It's been so slow. Why would it work? But when you press record, it's like it beeps, but the thing doesn't start for a while. Beep. Huh? That better have worked. So like, I just noticed it out in the field. You press record, but the countdown isn't starting, even though it beeped. And then like it lags, a huge lag as you're going and then it kicks in to record. It's a good two seconds. And then turning it on was like three and a half seconds. That's a pain and the battery life is so bad in this that you don't want to turn it off. I mean, you do want to and you don't want to keep it on. So when you turn it it's like, you have to plan it in advance. You have to press record far before you're ready and you're draining battery life further and a lot of focus issues with that. This was one of the only respectable shots I got in the day. This was actually 4K 60p with the dynamic range boost mode on. I was like, not bad. I had time. This chipmunk just leaped up right in front of me and he stayed there for a long time. So I did the 300 frames. You can see how much softer that is, 300 versus 60p. And that dynamic range boost mode, I must say, it looks nice. I managed to get a little closer. I was like, hey, little buddy, yeah, it's a beautiful shot. It would have blown you away though with the 200 prime. That's all I can say. This was nice. I got the perfect situation, a backlit chipmunk but the image was quite noisy. This is the one I enhanced with Topaz to 8K. As you can see side by side, 8K versus 4K, it's like, and it denoised somehow. I don't remember clicking denoise, but it enhanced it in some way and it's beautiful, it just takes time. I got this starling in 300 frames per second throwing up some sort of beetle. He was like, oh God, what is this? Oh, why'd I eat that? Oh, get out of me. Get out of my body, ladybug. Leave me alone. And then I did a pixel to pixel 4K. Huh? We, we cropped in and gained quality, even though it's a useless mode that you can just crop in and post, but I still, I'm having a hard time 
coming to terms that it's a useless mode, but it is. So I saw enough from that day. If you're a wildlife shooter, you're in Panasonic, you only have like four decent options. You have this prime is the top, but you don't have much reach with it. So you could do this or the 100 to 400. I just don't like the zooming of that. It's a too long of a throw. It's stiff, it throws you off. And the toniature, that's, that's a hurtful one. The 100 to 300 was easier to operate, but it's not as sharp as the 100 to 400. And the thing is, the 50 to 200 is sharper than the 100 to 400. And it wasn't sharp enough because I've seen this thing. So I would debate between this and maybe the 100 to 400 and just deal with it. Just put it out at 400 and never touch that and then just single autofocus. You could live, but the system is growing on me. I just wish the viewfinder was sharper so I could judge focus better. That was on. Oh, goodbye battery. I gotta charge that immediately. The battery life hurts. And the focus, judging the focus can be really hard and annoying, but so far, so good. So good, if you enhance it, of course, with Topaz. I got a video coming, I took this out yesterday with in mind that I was gonna sharpen some of these with Topaz and slow it down further, and I did get some magic, I'm not gonna lie to you. Some 8K 1200 frames per second woodpecker stuff that will blow your mind. Not yet, that was a teaser. That was teasing you to subscribe and watch that video someday and like it like you did this one right now and buy either of these or both through the affiliate links that's an option decent lens i just don't like it compared to this it's spoiled it's half the weight that's nice really small it was fun to use but damn if you didn't spoil me you caviar bitch oh man so it's tough to go back from that and I won't, I refuse to, so. But you can feast on the crumbs of life. Go enjoy those. Subscribe.